Jackie Cash and Lori Kilmartin. Jackie Cash and Lori Kilmartin. It's the Jackie and Lori Show. The Jackie and Lori Show. It's the Jackie and Lori Show. The Jackie and Lori Show. You know what? I knew I sounded too cheerful on that first start. I was like, this doesn't feel right. There was a false start. There was a false start, you guys. And here we are. I'm Jackie Cation. You're Lori Kilmartin. Lori Kilmartin. You're, by the way, your fans hate me. My fans hate you? Yeah. I Dork made Forest fans? the mistake of Googling Jackie and Lori podcast reviews yeah. and reading. Yeah. People that come here from the Dork Forest fucking hate my guts. All of them. And they love you. Um, a lot of reviews start out, I love Jackie. And then dot, dot, dot. <laughs> Some guy wrote some paragraph about everything he, he loves can't me? stand. About you? <laughs> yeah. Which is his way of saying he loves you. Well, um, well. Uh, I'll have you know that I have kept up with the reviews as well on iTunes, mm-hmm. and some people only like you. I didn't see any of them today. Uh, well, <laughs> you should uh, keep looking because the thing <laughs> is, is, I mean, that's it's a classic stand-up thing where you're like, you yeah. only see the bad ones about you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because I only saw the bad ones about me. Okay, and right. uh, so. Uh, the people that like both of us like both of us, and mm-hmm. the people that like you more are the person that likes me more. Uh, we just got to keep going. Yeah, it's that's gonna right. be fun. Moving ahead. That's it. Keep keep rolling. We're just doing one tonight. Mm-hmm. And I just got back from doing Portland's Helium with Maria, and then Eugene, Oregon. And Eugene was a what yeah, was Portland it's, it's on Saturday? Just comedy. Oh, you're wearing a shirt. I'm oh, yes. wearing a shirt. I was given it's a it's a couple of local comics. Can they I got feel that locals. fabric? Is a nice. It's nice. It's a it's a. Oh, that's comfy, cozy. Yeah, it's a nice shirt. It's the Just Comedy people, uh, Rudy, and who went to college with Margie Mintz. Who? You know Margie Mintz, Dan no. Mintz. Margie used to oh, do, okay. Used to do stand up, does a lot of acting, and now uh, has two children. And Dan works on Bob's Burgers. And well, um, good luck to those guys. It sounds like yeah, a, it's all a working out. Situation but. in financial terror. <laughs> it isn't. Uh, I know. I think it's all working out. Yeah. And um, but uh, yeah. So Portland was super fun. Get this. So Maria's work at Helium. Mm-hmm. And I'm opening for her. Right. Tammy Pescatelli is working Harvey's. Harvey's, which used to be the old last laugh, which originally... Really? Yeah, yeah. I, this is this is my comedy history, Jackie, okay? Yeah, because yeah, okay? Portland, Oregon had a comedy club called Harvey's that I've only known about for 20 years. Okay. Be- before that, 20 before years. Before that, it was, owned, it was called The Last Laugh. There's a chain. There was two in um, San Jose. There was one in Portland, one in Seattle, and one in Phoenix. Really? Owned by the guy that uh, either raped or tried to rape a server and went to jail, Joe Torres. Oh. And his wife, Christina. I'm sure they're divorced. <laughs> uh, yeah, I don't think that, that relationship uh, kept going. Hopefully I don't not. know what happened. They were all of the, they themselves were, um, you know, well, I mean, obviously he was a piece of shit. She was dicey. I never, I met her one or two times. Right. She was, I was just terrified Did of her. Did you work the room? Did you work Yeah, there, I worked all chain? of them. I was like an MC. I worked all of them oh, all the okay. time. So I was just like trying to stay on her good side because she's one that books the room. So this is mid-90s. Early nineties, early, early 90s. like ninety two ish and stuff. Oh wow! And um, uh, yeah, all they all were great rooms. So I have no idea how they, and maybe it was just the nineties, where like right. everything was a great room. Yeah, but you were... would just fucking murder all the time, all, all five rooms. That's where I met Brad Upton. And, okay. Um, yeah, we shared a condo together. Who's mm-hmm. who's now his dry bar is like had a ten bajillion yeah. right hits views. a thousand a bajillion. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, and he's like a, a track coach at uh, University of Washington. Oh, and I remember then he was like an oh, assistant yeah, yeah. track coach on the side. I was like, that's a weird gig, but he loves it. He loves. Oh coaching. yeah, he's great. Yeah, he's a he's a coach guy, and he's a super funny guy. Anyway, yeah. uh, so then. The last laugh went out of business, and the guy that owned the building, Barry Collin, just, I don't know why he called it Harvey's. I don't know either, but he was famous for being out of his goddamn mind. Super cheap. Oh, yeah. Super cheap. Not only super cheap, but had this whole thing. You know, Augie Smith has worked for Barry for 20 years, right? right? And, um, And I would ask Augie if he would recommend me, because Barry had a hard, you know that rule that he had? Which was? Is that you could suggest a comic to headline, 
But if they did not do well, oh, that's right. You didn't get booked for yeah. a year. So Augie was always like, "Can I do it the, my week? Because then I won't uh, do it after meet. his week. Yeah, yeah. Well, like during his week. He oh, would oh suggest yeah, yeah, me. yeah. And then and then you have to murder, or you not only did yeah. you kill your career, but also Augie's. Right. That's then it horrible. would have hurt Augie's. And um and so we never ended up having it happen. Because I think Barry changed it to the week that he booked you for. So wait, what? Essentially, like if so Augie would have suggested me, no, no, Augie would have suggested me. Yeah, I would get booked two months later. Yeah, and then if I didn't murder, Augie would have been a year from the week that I did. Oh my so god, he would have lost bananas! Week. I mean, yeah, it was so- just such a, a just such a Machiavellian kind of like orchestra. Nah. It was just completely insane. Why do these people book? Just count your money and give the club to a fucking booker, okay? <laughs> count your drink right. sales. That's what you're in yeah, it for. That's what you're in it for. You're just in it for cash. He and always he would constantly headline that guy Rick, who was like the first who marry R-I-C? a millionaire guy you know remember the oh that guy yes the guy who wore the flame pants that pat oswald split a he uh he featured for him this is a great he was on i want to uh i married a millionaire yes that I, comic? yeah yeah he was like the first bachelor and it, yeah. i think everyone at comedy is like what he's a <laughs> this millionaire guy? yeah he was he supposed fucking to be headlines a, harvey yeah that's he's not, not a millionaire a, <laughs> No way. Right. Someone who headlines Harvey's, that is not a million. <laughs> uh, just by definition, uh, especially for Barry. And But <laughs> I remember Pat Oswalt, uh, when when it came out that that guy was on that show, Pat yeah. was like, I featured for him once, and they shared a condo. And that guy went through the condo and looked at Patton's room, and Patton had a better alarm clock than he did. <laughs> and so Rick took it. Of course. He was like, this is a headliner alarm clock. Look, I got to side with Rick on that one. (laughs) Headliner gets the good alarm clock. They got to wake up for radio, right? Please write down, headliner gets the good alarm clock. (laughs) Kyle's actually filling out a resume. He's on on LinkedIn right now. He does feel like he might be transcribing this. He seems very, very (laughs) Very intense. Avid typing. (laughs) Um, Um, so So how was Helium? Oh, Helium is so wonderful. Maria's audiences are outstanding. They book... Um, the but that's Melissa booked Vils- out, of, out of where? The home office in Helium? The of home- Helium Town, yeah. Okay. Helium Town books all seven of them now. And um, Melissa Villasenor is going to be there in early June. Oh, cool. And uh, but Maria's, She's on SNL? Yeah. It's from here. Mm-hmm. And uh, is a delight. And, mm-hmm. uh, she, and was one of the comics of the week. Yeah. Early yeah. on. Early on. And she... Uh, but oh, what was it? Um, great crowds, great helium. crowds, helium. It was, and then, and then I do this. I do the thing that I always do whenever I open for Maria sure. at a club club, where I where the audience comes up to me afterwards and says they thoroughly enjoyed my set, mm-hmm. and then I say, "Feel free to email the club." Yes, and then, um, but the club told me that they on the regular get emails about headlining me there. They've passed them on to corporate, and corporate is unmoved. But Whoa. Um, yeah, so uh, but I also found out that there's because get this, so Tammy's at at Harvey's, right? Uh, Caitlin Weinhauser is doing a theater in town. Brandy Posey was doing a theater in town. These are different. So all, people are just doing other venues. Maggie if May you can't get through to corporate at yeah, Helium. Mm-hmm. Yeah, Maggie May was in town. I think doing a corporate. Doing oh, a, a one nighter, wow. and uh, I tried to set up a comedy brunch, and uh, only Brandy came because uh, <laughs> Tammy got a headache because it was a Saturday morning, and Tammy had three shows that Saturday so night. What, that's awful. For, so what? It's like six, nine, Harvey's. and eleven, or six thirty. It's got to be 11? seven. It's got to be seven, nine, and eleven, right? Wow. I don't think six. And six doesn't make any sense. But it was a Thursday, th- th- Friday, Saturday. Thursday, Friday, Saturday. So mm-hmm. one on Thursday, two on Friday, three on Saturday. Brutal. So brutal. Yeah. And but ideally, you could sell. You have more merch to sell if you're right. a merch Oh, my person. God. I sold so much merch uh, because Maria only brought 50 tea towels. Yeah. And so I sold out of her tea towels by Saturday. Mm-hmm. And then people – and then just – People just bought my merch. I think I got another grand for a donation for Meat Shield. Guess what I did? What'd you do? Okay, so I was in Palm Springs. Oh, that's right. I was right. doing this, um, like a private event. <laughs> you had never been? 
It's so beautiful. I can't believe it. It's not that I can't far of a drive. You've never been to Palm Springs. It's gorgeous. I was it's like, an oh, mall. I I could just live here. But it's it's you're in the desert. There's mountains all around, and it's a lot of low. It's low. Um, low ceiling altitude no no, the buildings it's not like 10 story buildings it's like single two three story buildings so you can see the mountains you know you're it's not blocked by some piece of shit building right just some casinos but then you don't have to live very few yeah Yeah. Uh, my hotel didn't face the casinos well played um but uh you were doing a corporate or yeah it was um Sean Polofsky recommended me, and I recommended you for next time. Oh God! Um, but, but they they love female comics. They they're out there once a year. It's like right? a sober group. Oh, nice! And um, it was like thirty minutes. You did Easy. thirty minutes of stand up. Not only that, they. Uh, yes, I got um, this much. Oh, that's good. That's fair for almost in town with with hotel. Damn. Yes. Yeah. Hyatt. Great. Hyatt Hotel. Not and bad. a Hyatt. <laughs> so very, they, very nice. Here's the thing. That, I mean, sometimes there's gigs where they're so nice to you. You're like, I, I don't believe this. Right. <laughs> he, he insisted on paying me half of it like two months ago. Right. And then when I hadn't cashed a check immediately, he was emailing me. Right. What about? I'm like, I have, we haven't done the gig yet. Calm yeah. down. Yeah, yeah. And then he, then he paid, then he, he like overnighted me the next check before the gig started like last Thursday That's what or I want. That's what I want every time I do any sort of corporate. Yes, um, you're right. Yeah. So anyway, by the time I drive out there, I've, I'm, I you're pay, paid. I'm paid. And so I had books and I, and I was thinking about how you sell so much stuff and you were able to donate. Right. And how uncomfortable I am trying to sell books on stage. And right. I thought, well, if I'm donating the profits to something i won't feel uncomfortable you know huh so uh that's what happened i I pitched i just you know held up my books and you know kind of described them and i said all the profits will go to glad oh and i sold 17 books and the profits were like it i think it was like 134 134 bucks. Yeah. That I and then I I sent it to Glad, took a screenshot, tweeted it, and yeah. it's like, yeah, there you go. I there broke even. I you know, I didn't lose money. No, but and I do, some of your books got so Yes, got I'm out getting there. my books out there yep. and uh and then I gave away a lot of our stickers, maybe mm-hmm. a bunch of it was mostly gay men, so oh, I'm nice. like, you guys will love us, please. Oh my gosh. And um Somebody did ask me if I had any uh, Jackie and Laurie notebooks. And I said, I only have the totes. She has the notebooks. We should probably split them up a little more evenly. We should do that better. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, uh, everybody in Oregon wants to see us, uh, okay. by the way. They want us to do, because uh, there's, there's, I guess there's a couple of different... It's not called the kitchen sink. I forget what it's called, but it's like uh, there's a there's a, a theater space called kitchen something. Okay, and then there's a theater space called the siren, mm-hmm. and they're both uh, they're both pretty great mm. uh, to do sort of a live Jackie and Lori. We could oh, do that each would be do, so fun. and we and um, we could each do half hour sets like yeah. like we did, and then do an hour pod. Yeah, and uh, and then Marie uh, Marie and I went to Eugene, and the Just Comedy guys. We're like, please come. And I said, well, if, you know, if w- your schedule provides, that'd be great. And if not, um, I could just come and do stand up or you can just come and do stand up. Mm-hmm. And um, and then the woman who booked Salem was there mm-hmm. and she was like, we would love you to come. And then wow. the woman who books Bend who, oh that we've been talking to online, right. she also came to the show and she was like, when are you guys coming to Bend? We got to figure something out. We got to figure something out. So that sounds fun. Yeah. And. You know, Oregon is so pretty. Oh, it's the, beautiful. The hotel was insane. I will not be staying at whatever hotel we stayed at in Eugene, even though it's under construction. Mm-hmm. And usually that just means it's wrapped in plastic. Right. It usually doesn't mean that there's a drill going nine hours a day. Oh, was there? Yeah. But it, otherwise it was nice? No. Oh, no, it was no. awful. No, no. And there was a lot of no, paneling. I thought you said it was insane in a good way. Well, right. And it wasn't. It wasn't oh. insane. <laughs> the bed was comfortable. The bathtub was very nice. Mm-hmm. There was too much fucking art. And it was all creepy. Oh, like I Like there saw. was a bicycle seat. Yeah. And there was a paddle that had a frat thing on it. I was... There was a several lamps that were intimidating. There were intimidating <laughs> lamps that were happening. I didn't need any part of it. Okay, so the Hyatt had a little balcony. Okay, and um, and it's it. it I, 
are all Hyatt's this way? I know the San Francisco Hyatt is, and this one was where there's like an interior. Um, oh, that open thing, yeah, sort of like, a like an atrium, and then yeah. there's a like clear uh, elevator that goes up and down. Oh, I think they yeah. must that must be their thing. I yeah. just thought it was a San Francisco Hyatt from growing up, right? Um, but uh, I had a balcony and um, a nice, that faced outside, nice crisp white sheets, no oh, yeah. robe. I, I I thought I was going to have a robe. You were I was hoping a little for a robe? Uh, yeah. You'll have a I robe. I opened up the closet. I'm like, ah, oh, damn it. I should have called ahead. Because <laughs> I could have brought my own robe. Right. I love, I had room You're service. in a robe. I'm right in a robe now, now. You love a robe. I got one. I have three robes. I'm you know a connoisseur. A, you know when I was a child? Hmm. My stepmother insisted we all have robes. She was like, you wear robes. Not like you're yeah. not an animal. Yeah. And we're like, no, we're animals. <laughs> why, are, why are there robes all of a sudden? You can't just be out in your pajamas. You need to. Uh, you need something. You need a little a little belt to cinch so you can walk around and, you know. You're a classy lady, Kilmartin. <laughs> you're a real classy lady. <laughs> um, uh, so, and then I was at Flappers the weekend before. Okay. Right? Before... You and the I, Palm Springs, yeah, 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 yeah. Because you, we did too, right? And uh, so those are fun. Uh, the I think the Saturday show, the first one was sold out, mm-hmm. and then the second, the, it was pretty good attendance. It was this Mother's one- Day weekend. Oh, did I tell you about that Grass Valley gig? Um, with Sacramento, where yeah. you drove the hour and then drove back. Oh, yeah, I did. Right. Yeah. Oh, I, okay. Never mind. I already talked yeah. about all that. Then. It was uh, the. Uh, so this week we're now we're doing this Monday night, and right? So um, it's dropping next Monday. It's dropping next Monday, and so I'll, I'm going to do Women Crush Wednesday again for the first time again. So uh, this will only be the second. I time. love that show. I'm really psyched, yeah. and then uh, I'm doing a bunch of other LA sets this week, and then next week I'm also doing LA sets, and it's um, put your hands together, mm-hmm. and then a couple other gigs, and it's it's going to be super fun. Should I tell you what happened? <laughs> to, oh, I did tell you. That I was just at dinner and the table next to mine. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> it was a guy who looked like a comic, uh, but he looked like he looked like a goofball comic in, in the way that he was probably our age mm-hmm. and he was wearing a fedora oh indoors at dinner. If you're not Paul F. Tompkins, then I don't want to hear about it. And Paul F. Tompkins takes his hat off inside oh, okay. because he's an adult man. Sure, sure, sure. And I mean, that's the whole thing about if you're going to be a hat guy, mm-hmm. you have to know that you're supposed to take your hat off indoors right, right. because that's what the whole fucking hat thing was about. Uh, if, as far as I, I've read some historical fiction <laughs> anyway, but um, he was, uh, I'm wearing a t-shirt that says just comedy. Right. And so Andy and I sit down for dinner and all of a sudden, and he had been staring at me, and I was like, he looks really familiar. He looks like a comic. Whatever. We sit down, we're eating, and then all of a sudden I hear him say uh, something about Louis C.K. Mm-hmm. And um, and so I decide not to listen in, because I don't want to, I don't want to become angry. And uh, But I, I just hear the woman he's having dinner going, she goes, C.K., isn't that that guy? And he goes, I'm just going to tell you one of his bits. <laughs> He's got some good ones. It was he did have some good ones, and uh, and it made me laugh. I was like, "All right, I don't need to listen to any more of this." And then the other thing that happened today is mm-hmm. I got a text message from a comic, mm-hmm. uh, or he used to do stand up. I don't know what his last name is. Um, he's a friend of a friend, right? Okay. You know Cindy Capanera? Yeah, yeah. I think I've met her one or two. She's a comedy times. writer, yeah, she's and a I writer. think yeah, 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 and he's a he's a comedy writer. This yeah. guy Joe, and so Joe texts me, and he goes. I have a joke, but it's that only a woman could tell. Oh, no. You could have it, uh, but you can't judge me for writing it. And I was like, no, thank you. <laughs> you have. Um, oh, I can't. You've told me so much about you. Right. I, in I, that description of your In that joke. description, it's way too, way too much. And here's the thing is it literally reminded me of something I did in probably 2002. Mm. where I tried to give a joke about being black to a black comic. <laughs> and the look on Suli McCullough's face, <laughs> who is a perfectly great writer and amazing comic himself. He's, he's got himself covered. He doesn't need my fucking... Imp, imp, he was literally... I, I insisted on telling him the joke. Uh-huh. This is so humiliating to tell, but this is why you don't want to do this, right? <laughs> because he was hurt by the joke. 
because oh. the joke was dumb. It was about and I right. I didn't even realize I it was the learning experience that was me telling a a a black man a joke that he should tell as a black man. So it's not you're not riffing off something he's already done. This nope. is whole setup and punch. This is from whole cloth. Oh, this boy. is a terrible idea. Yes, from the start. Definitely. And so I had I told Joe that story, and Joe. Uh, insisted on telling me his what lady joke anyway. Oh my god! Anyway, much like I insisted on telling Suli the joke, and <laughs> Suli was like, "You can't nope. be talked out of it. You, you can't really be. can't. It turns out you can't be talked out of it." And and Suli was like, "No, nope, I won't be doing <laughs> that. Uh, do whatever you want to do with that joke." And and so it took me, like I learned in that moment that that was wrong. Uh-huh. And then whenever I, it's on my. F- fucking bread album that joke by the way mm. and it's not a great joke it's not a great when you get tried to give to sue yeah yeah you, i, you I essentially reworked to it. take it on yeah okay and i made it my own which is fine and um better me than him it was about liberia and slavery oh my god jackie yes that is the correct response no. uh so 10 years later so you gave a black comic a slavery joke yeah Okay. Stop. In, in other words, Jackie, yeah. stop talking. <laughs> uh, don't do it. And uh, so, so Joe mm-hmm. <laughs> texts me, and the joke is that Joe sent me, and he insisted on it. And I, uh, he was women over sixty. Oh God! It's not hashtag me too. It's hashtag me please. Okay. Okay. And so I call Cindy and Cindy's like, yeah, you should really unpack that joke and just talk about how you're not 60. And that's clearly uh, women are unfuckable at 60. Is that what you're saying, Joe? And then she she went on a rant that was really fucking hilarious. But um, that you know who should tell that joke? Who? Joe. Joe should tell that joke. Yeah. And then then 10 years from off stage. Right. And then 10 years from now, find out not to. But here's where uh, I, I have not done Wendy Liebman a favor because mm-hmm. I said, "Oh, it's a one-liner. You should give to Wendy." Oh no! <laughs> <laughs> At which point, That's Joe passing the buck. It was the worst passing the buck because I didn't know that Joe knew Wendy. So he goes, <laughs> "Well, I'm going to call her right now." Oh no! I know. So Wendy, if you're listening, and I think you are because <laughs> you are recuperating, <laughs> I am so sorry. Oh my! And God. I do. And the thing about Joe is that he is a really funny, nice guy. Mm-hmm. He just. As am I. I am a very funny, nice white lady yep. uh, that should not be telling uh, black comics what kind of jokes to do. Do you know this guy? Older guy, like maybe. Late oh, 60s, I know his name. Seventies. You know him. You know yeah. him. So he, I, I did a set with him um, this week, and uh, I've never heard older jokes in my life. Yes. And at first, I was angry, and then I was like obsessed. I was like, "What? Who how- is he?" He Wait, was, I, I don't he was, know he's him. He's a comic um, from a certain t- era, and I guess he worked in... The 50s. <laughs> mm, no, 70s, no. late, early 80s, probably, okay. mid-80s. But it, Nicholson Impression. Uh, wow. Yeah. And Did, I, was he I, saying wasn't anything I live, new? Uh, wasn't I live chatting, texting it to you guys? I think you I were. Because I couldn't believe his references. Yeah. Uh, I th- and the audience, luckily, was old enough to get it. Um, so they like he killed. Was that Palm Springs? No, no, no. no. This is here in. in uh, oh, it was Los just somewhere in L.A. Yeah, just picked up a set and he went up. I think he brought a lot of the crowd. Oh, and so he he did great, and then I went up after him. And <laughs> I also did great. It turns out you also yeah. did jokes from the twenty first century, <laughs> and then um, but uh, but Nicholson. But he huh? had the stage. He had the stage presence, stage craft. You know, it, sure. and uh, it, it taught me like, wow, I might be able to get away with some real shit in twenty five <laughs> years. Like I could, co- I, if I just write a, a good forty five, I can coast on it for <laughs> as long as I feel like it. Right. Uh, I will not wish that upon you. <laughs> I will wish that there, the writing continues. Uh, there will be the horny grandma stage of my career, though, right? <laughs> like I'm going to be on the road as sex grandma, right? And I'm going to be talking about fucking all the 25 year olds in the crowd and oh my God. talk about my 40 year old son. I um. <laughs> I don't want that. <laughs> but I know that that the thing is is you'll be able to make that fun. Make a lot of money. You might you might be able right? to rake Maybe. it in. Maybe. Maybe. Who knows? Um um I uh we're going to need money. 
It was somebody today was. Uh, I'm obsessed with little revenue streams. Oh, with small. That's re- why I was looking on our, our. I'm like, have we? Have oh, the, we gotten more reviews? Are we having getting a higher profile? Oh, the Patreon and the, coming and the Max in. No, I just mean like the, yeah, it, yeah, all that stuff. And um, and then I've been working on my YouTube channel. Okay, <laughs> I have so far. I have made a uh, fifty four dollars. Uh, I made fifty four dollars from Ebates in the last five months. Ebates, yeah, Ebates. Oh, yeah, you get rebates but, right. for uh, shopping things. I'm and, not going to um, do that. Yeah, it's a lot of fiddle and diddle. But it's weird. Like this, I put up a video of. Uh, uh, I forgot. I already forgot what it was. I've, I've been just putting up little clips and stuff, and yeah. it got over a thousand views. And it's and you know they break down how much money each one, and it's okay. uh, sixty one cents in my pocket after a thousand views. All right, yeah, That's, it could be worse. Mm-hmm. I mean, the the thing is 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 this is what we're all. This is what we've we've all become. We're like, is there a way that I can make fifty four dollars a month from nine hundred things? I know, because I then know. we would all. But it's like the mon- you can't just depend on one thing, you no. know. And you and you and you have to expect things are going to go away. And things will things will go away. You will, will definitely have to change. I uh, Postmates. I did an ad for Postmates uh, for the Dork Forest. Yeah, and. Like we know people, comics who work for Postmates, yeah, and who, they rely heavily on tips. I yeah. guess people are assholes and, and they in don't cash. Tip. Yes, and just oh, tip really? in cash. Does Postmates take? Uh, uh, they might. There might. I think the app had a tip thing at the af- in the after. But like, but Lyft taken, doesn't. Lyft doesn't take the tape. The tip money. Lyft. Uh, the tip all goes to the driver. My whole thing with Lyft, Postmates, and um, all of that stuff now is to tip in cash. That's nice, but it's not tax deductible. Uh, no, but uh, I don't know that it's tax deductible anyway. Well, no, it's if I if I have a oh, lift that's fifty four dollars on my yeah my credit card and oh. it's, and ten dollars tip it's it's the whole no, thing. You can re- still count it. Yeah, but you have to like keep track of the cash separately as opposed to here's my credit card statement. Oh. All these lifts were you know going to clubs my, and stuff like that. My thing is is every time I go to an airport, I t- uh-huh. I tip twenty dollars in cash. Because nice. it's an airport, I do and ten I at Burbank, but I don't. But you live a mile and a half from Burbank. That's right. It's an. And it's so, just they're disappointed, and then I, I like to think that they're happy when they get the little ding from me. Yes. Yeah. And uh, they're like, oh, it's a quick ride. Uh, but both of my 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 lifts this trip were super because it rained uh, when I went to Portland. It was pouring. It was so you're literally from Portland to no the- from from my house to LAX on Thursday morning. <sighs> Was super expensive. Fucking, why didn't you fly southwest to from Burbank to Portland? I don't book it. It's uh, it's, oh yeah, okay. And so Maria um, books it or yeah, okay. Maria Maria's travel. Why don't person. you guys both book go out of Burbank on Southwest um, to Portland? It's a nonstop. It was a nonstop. I know, but I mean, you if you go out of Burbank, it's so much easier and cheaper. Um, I don't think it is cheaper, but uh, but uh. In terms of lift and stuff, it is right. Um, All right, look, it's all right. It's a it's a done trip. <laughs> done I don't know deal. why I'm it's arguing about it. It's true. It's uh and and um and I think we're we're committed to. Oh my god, <laughs> you got the text message today that they picked us up at the Porsche. Oh my god, that's yeah. Wait, tell this whole so, story. So okay, so yeah, you're committed uh, to Delta. Flying... I get it. When I hear these stories, I right, get it. the Delta thing, we're committed. So right, uh, flight was delayed out of Eugene. For uh, an hour and a half, so I was afraid we were going to miss the connecting flight, and they were you rebo- connecting to. Uh, f- at, we flew Eugene to Seattle, Seattle to LAX today. I hate that. Right, but there was no um, Eugene yeah. to anywhere uh, direct. Mm. You had even to get to Burbank, you had to fly to Salt Lake. Okay, so um, Eugene to Seattle was delayed an hour and a half. I thought we were going to miss the flight. We uh, so I'm checking. They they backup booked us on a second flight. They backup book you? Yeah, the Delta does. If, at that if, level? At that level, or oh maybe at every level. I'm uncertain. No, I've no? never been backup booked. Okay. Trust me. Okay, so it, uh, I guess you're backup booked. And so uh, we're getting off, and I'm like, uh, we're supposedly at this other gate. And luckily, because they, we could have, we were, so we're on two flights. We're on the 207 which was flying out of A5. We mm-hmm. landed in B terminal. Mm-hmm. And then we're also on a 335 uh, flight that they backup booked us out of S6. Oh, no. Right. So um, 
listing on the app is S6. So we would have gone to the wrong gate, except for as I was deplaning, there was a, a very perky uh, Delta lady with an iPad that had my name on it. Oh, my God. And she was like, are you Miss Cashian? And I said, sort of. And I said, is this that Porsche thing? And she goes, yes, it is. It's a, and um, oh she got very God. excited to explain it. I said, well, we're together. We're going to the thing. And so we get, we're driving around the tarmac. And I was like, she said, I have you at A5. And I said, my app says S6. She pulls over in the middle of a, like a taxiway and calls and double checks for us and oh then takes God. us to A5. How fun. It was uh, pretty cool. Now, a Porsche doesn't have a back seat, so it, to speak right? It was of, a right? Porsche SUV. I didn't know that existed. They're called Cayenne. Do you know why? Because they're hot. Oh, my anyway, God. Anyway, I'll be over here. No. <laughs> no. Give it to Joe. Give oh it to God. Joe. The folded arms of Kyle. And Kyle accepts anything. <laughs> um, I've been listening to... <laughs> Uh, I think we? we're at a half hour. Yeah, we are. Let's do it. Comic of the week is uh, going to be my friend Tammy Pescatelli. Yeah. Let's do it. I, She's I been grinding I can't it out. Believe sh- we haven't I can't done believe her. we haven't done it. It turns out her uh, her Twitter handle is Tammy Pescatelli. T A M M Y Pescatelli. Like a fish and a Telly, Italian. Telly, like uh, like, like spaghetti. L-L-I. Yeah. Um, <laughs> but like Tammy, spaghetti. I don't know. Tammy Pescatelli is uh, literally just a, a headliner of extraordinary talent. Yes. Told me we went. We were went to Powell's for a coffee. Oh um, my god! That's Thursday, heaven. it was so great. And we're we're talking about. And she was talking about um, how she wants to do cruise ships, but it's hard because her son is eleven, and she doesn't want to be away from him. Right. Because he's super needy. And I said, I know someone else who has a needy <laughs> 11, 12-year-old. Tammy and I should co-headline cruise ships in about seven years. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. And she said... Um, Did she say it's weirder that they're actually a little more needier now than when they were little? I think she said it's a, it's a bad time yeah. for her to be gone a lot. Yeah. Yeah. It's hard. And, uh, and so she... But she was talking about... Um, I said... Yeah, there's a lot of pregnant uh, comics doing uh, specials and stuff. She goes, you know, I was pregnant uh, doing the road. And uh, and then she told me that she didn't tell anyone she was pregnant till she was five months pregnant. She didn't tell her agent or anybody because, um, well, she told her her agent who then said, you can't tell anyone. What the because fuck? Because they won't Seriously? book you next. They won't book that you the next That makes total quarter. sense, of course. And, um, and then... When she was, I don't know if he dropped her or not, but uh, but he was an ass about the whole thing. And she worked until um, she flew back to New York uh, from a from a corporate in, in um, Florida, nine months pregnant. And I was like, "You're not supposed to fly when you're nine months pregnant." She said, "What am I, Rockefeller?" I have to work. I can't. She must not, not have been. She must not have shown a lot, right? They won't let you on if you if the you look stewardesses or the or the flight attendants. Yeah. will just be like, nope, bail. Uh, I think I flew eight. even even eleven years ago. Yeah. Oh yeah. Yeah. I mean, mm-hmm. I was pregnant like a year ahead of her. Then. Yeah. Yeah. Um. Yeah. I mean, you know, I Did was. They just, I was you? just telling somebody at work has my the lit agent or fi- had just fired the lit agent that let me go after yeah. I had my baby. Yeah. And they were like, oh, I was I was bummed to let this guy go. I'll go. I go, really? He, uh, <laughs> he dropped me after I had a baby. So oh, it's OK. Do You're not, OK. Do not. What a piece of shit. Anyway, so it turns out alive and well sexism. Well, yes, but she has two kids. And is she is she have husband still? P- Tammy? Yeah. I don't think she has two kids, does she? I thought she had two. I thought she had one. Oh, okay. I'm really good friends with Tammy Pescatelli, you guys. We should all go look at her act, because I bet you if she has two kids, she's got twice as much material. No, Jackie, that's not how it works. I think that's exactly how it works. She Every um, person in your life gives you ten minutes. She... She um she moved to Pennsylvania. Yep. She kind of lives in a rural area. Is that right? Yeah. So she has to drive far to the airport every yes. time she has a gig. How far away is she from a major city? I think it's a good hour and a half. Really? Yeah, I think it's a haul. Does she have family out there? Uh, yeah. Her parents moved to help, oh, and her husband's God. still there. And uh, but I think he was ill. Oh, so okay. uh the they're they've the they, they, Dude, they got a little a village. Lot. It's a bit. It's a it's that's a full a plate lot to carry, man. Yeah. 
Yeah. While you're a road comic. Yep. Fuck. We got to... Everybody go buy something of Tammy Pescatelli's. Yeah. And let's do a Max Fun Break. Mm Mm-hmm. Hey, I'm Aneke. And I'm James. And together, we are the self-proclaimed wonder twins of podcasting and host Minority Corner. We tackle subjects like LGBTQ topics, pop culture, and untold histories of American POCs, like the true story of escaped slave turned pirate turned Navy man in the Civil War turned congressman Robert Smalls. Plus current events from our perspective. Deep dive movie and TV reviews. You'll also get awesome book recommendations from their neighborhood friendly librarian. Don't forget my award-winning Jennifer Hudson impressions. And I'm telling you. While never taking ourselves too seriously. Minority Corner. Because together. We're the majority. Every Friday here on Maximum. Maximum. And we're back. Uh. So I was awake last night because I, my kid stayed at his dad's last night. So mm-hmm. it was just me and my mom. And uh, that's always, you know, if she oh, talks therapy. to me, I yeah. it's therapy. Therapy is depressing in a way because I thought maybe there'll be some breakthrough and we'll have some like, you know how they in You've the only movies there's four times, right? <laughs> but, you know, in the movies, there's always like some relationship and then they have a moment and then they get closer. Whatever kind of relationship is fraught. Right. Right. But I, I don't think she's going to change. I'm not changing. And it's just <laughs> like, oh, I have a mother who doesn't understand me. And mm-hmm. I don't understand her. And this is about it. This is Well, your and- early days here, I would say, with what? this therapy. I think you're pretty early. Day- you went, what, four sessions? Five? Yes. Okay. This is the third year of our living situation. I'm not saying it hasn't been a long three years. I think it's been, I think that, I think we all know. I am so mad at my dad for just leaving (laughs) this with me. This collection of bones. Did he really say she's your problem now? No. Okay. That would have been such a great line. Jackie, it's called writing. I know. I've never had to do it. My (laughs) father just keeps talking. And, uh, but so I'm running now. I, I, I spend a lot of my energy figuring out how to make the house bigger. And then I'm like, Oh, I I can do that. And then I'll, I'll like look up adding a second story and it's like it could be up to a year long i'm like okay that can't fucking happen (laughs) so so things seem like okay i'll do that i'll just take out a loan i'll do that and then it's like oh no that can't happen Mm -hmm. and i don't sometimes i spend a lot of time looking at 75 different solutions and then i'll decide not to do any of them and i think interesting i spent a year going over that in my head and i opted not to like breast reduction surgery yeah i i I, I, I'll cycle through times where I'm like, I'm going to do it and I'll do a ton of research and mm-hmm. then I'll be like, ah, I don't want to get cut for if right, I don't right. have to. Yeah. And what, and I wasted a lot of time investigating. So I feel like I'm doing that with, with this situation now. Like how can I live in this situation? How it, is it, is it adding square footage? Is it what, how do I, how do, how do I do it? She could live 10 more years. Right. I don't, I didn't sign up for spending my last fuckable decade living <laughs> with my mother. You know what I right. mean? Oh, I, I, I get it. Uh, could you please call your next album? My last <laughs> fuckable decade. Yes. <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> so, so, um, I don't yeah, know. that's, uh, that's brutal. I don't know. I don't know what to tell you. I'm getting a lot of um, a lot of input from audience members trying to give me some advice. I mean, I got a lot of advice from a lot of Maria's fans are super sweet. Mm-hmm. They're all very very sweet, mm-hmm. and um, but some of them are therapists, and th- some of them um, have uh, an interest in letting me know <laughs> what I should be doing. <laughs> And oh, no. that what they like about my set and what they don't like about my oh, set. Oh no! And, well, and I'm working the merch table. Oh and, my god! Um, so you have to put up with it. So I get a lot of. And there was a very drunk woman who um, who came out. I think it was second show Saturday, and she came out and she was super hammered. Her boyfriend uh, was not hammered. Picked her up afterwards, um, and um, he stayed. He. She couldn't figure. She couldn't figure Maria out. She didn't know what right. was happening. She had maybe had accidentally come to see a show. <laughs> yeah, when Maria's opening her set with one of those. Hey, a disclaimer. Yeah, the disclaimer. I love her a disclaimer for the hammered. Ex- disclaimer <laughs> for the for the possibly the disenfranchised. Yeah, and uh, <laughs> and it always makes me happy. I hadn't seen her in two months, 
And so a lot of her material, you know, you don't see somebody and then they do, I don't know, she's probably done 30 sets since I've seen her, mm-hmm. 30, 45 minute sets. And the difference wow. is Amazing. outstanding. Yeah. It's re- everything's tighter. There's extra lines. There's a bunch of new lines that are fucking outstanding. Great. And, uh, and so I was just sitting there going. Is she prepping for a CD? Yeah. she's In August, she's going to record something. So um, she's been working on this new hour, I think, for two years. Wow. So See, that's how long it takes. It, it and does. maybe even longer. I like a, I like a nice three-year in between. Mm-hmm. Um, oh, yeah. Caitlin Gill asked me if I'd open for her for her taping oh, up in San Francisco. Where? I uh, don't know. Uh, but I do have the time open. Uh, so she just texted me today and I checked and uh, I made her email me, of course, because please book me over email. And um, and I checked and I can do it. And I like the idea of that there's going to be a whole new generation of women comics who want me to open for them. Yeah. Uh, this is kind of this is going to be yes. steady work well into my seventies. That's all we want at this point. I just want steady <laughs> just make work sure, into my seventies. Right, make sure, yes, please become famous, and yes, I will open for you. Yes, yeah. Um, yeah. Sounds good to me. Uh, I got I got a bunch of hiatus weeks. Oh, do you? Yes. That uh, usually we don't get this much advance notice, but like we're, now I know up until January next year. So whoa, um, having Catherine. Uh, Try to fill some weeks. Pursue all leads. Pursue all leads. But we should probably do, you know, like if you uh, if you get a gig, like we could add a Tuesday or a Wednesday. Oh, that'd be cool. Right? If uh, you have a hiatus week, yeah. we could add an, an, an off day and do a live Jackie and Laurie. Yeah, that'd be fun. Depends, you know, like is she doing laughs in Seattle? Uh, I just was there. Oh, that's March. right. That's uh, right. So, yeah, we're ca- casting to the clubs I was at in the last year and a half or mm-hmm, two years. Mm-hmm. And I liked, I'd love to, I mean, I don't know if a helium is in my, is uh, in Madison, my sites, Wisconsin. I, who? I don't know. The, I don't the, know who. the two, uh, the daughters book it. And yeah. I don't, I don't know. If don't anybody know does know, there. feel free to email me. I don't know how because, to make that happen. Um, that's where I went to college and I would like to go back and do stand up. Oh, yeah. But I've done it twice and they've been very supportive, but I seem to be on a two year rotation. Oh. Uh I'm on a five year rotation with Bird at Zanies. <laughs> <laughs> and uh I think it, I think that's counting. not uncommon. And um Yeah. Well there's there's year there's there's decades when he books me every year or every year and a half mm-hmm. and there's decades when he doesn't. <laughs> Isn't it weird how you can have a you're you're going to have a decades long relationship with some bookers and it's with like some... dude I'm not leaving this business so you might as well just book me. Just book me. Just we're both we're going to do this till we die. This is I what we take do. my it avails and put, give me a week. Exactly. Just figure it out man. Um I uh I'm going to be in Houston. Oh, that's right. The joke joint. Um, you... Just to plug that, if anyone, we have any Texas people, uh, May. Didn't you already do it? I thought you did it. No, it. No, I'm doing it May. I'm doing it over Memorial Day weekend or Labor, whatever. Was this the, the one, one that got May. booked because of the debacle on Twitter? Debacle or me pointing out correctly? That's Stormy. <laughs> um, <laughs> well, I didn't want to bring up the name because no, uh, no, no, yeah, yeah. It's, it's the same place. Yeah, it's the same place. But you already did it once, didn't you? No, I've never done it before. Oh, this is the booking that came from that. Yeah. Oh, that's awesome. Yeah, I thought, I thought we had already lived this life. Uh, no, no, no. This is I, a life we that we're probably already have this conversation. Oh, at least once. It's May May thirtieth through <laughs> June first. Come sure. on out, please. Uh, think- I'd like to draw at least as well as a. No, 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 as, as the president's mistress for a if second that's at all possible well for how long though <laughs> and uh i i was trying to book a weekend in a club uh on one of my hiatus weekends um but it was it's a friday saturday and it's uh, near detroit yeah flying to fucking detroit is so expensive yeah and it's so i i wouldn't be able to it's a friday saturday and i would have to leave on thursday night yeah and uh, taking a red eye out and there's, you know, changing planes. Oh, it was just and, and um, the flight allowance wasn't as much as needed. Yeah. Yeah. Needed. Yes. yeah, yeah. So we're going to try to do problem it on with another some of that stuff. You don't have frequent flyer miles with Southwest? Not enough. Not enough? No. OK. Not enough. Uh, in June, I'm doing Rooster Tea Feathers. Oh, cool. Well, I'm, I'm going to do Mill Valley. Like the June 11th, right? Yeah, I'm doing yeah, Lucy's. Yeah, yeah. 
Throckmorton yes. on June 11th, and then the 13th through the 16th, I'm doing Rooster Tees. And then I believe the 27th through the 30th, the, so I have two good weeks, two great booked weeks yeah. in June, um, headline weeks. Kansas City, brand new club in Kansas City. Oh, what's it called? I believe it's called the Can- the Comedy Club of Kansas City. Oh. I'm not what even else kidding. Is there? there used to be a Stanford's there, right? Stanford with an uh, M or like an M. that. It's something like that. It was, um, but didn't wasn't that guy like a the owner something sketchy about that guy? Not this one. This was a brand. Oh, yeah, new this one. is a new one. Yeah. Hey, nice money. Yeah, Jesus. the money's all right. The gig's good. Um, and um, so it's got all kinds of potential, and I'm really looking forward to it because I've I've only done Missouri with Maria. Yeah. So it'll be super fun to to headline my own my own gig and um so t- and two and that's that's 10 shows that's 10 headline that's, sets oh that's great and i need every headline i'm thinking about doing um vermont like i'm thinking about doing the clubhouse during the week just some afternoon shows just oh, to on run. vermont okay yeah yeah, yeah 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 oh yeah i should probably ping the vermont comedy club and yeah. see if they'll bring me back yeah 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 <laughs> always just uh, <laughs> i have to write <laughs> down you should actually fly to vermont for some afternoon shows <laughs> yeah just start doing afternoon shows um, i've been listening to gabby dunn's podcast which is called bad with money uh-huh. it's aimed at millennials who are bad with money right but which is so, so i'm not i'm not great with money mm-hmm. i'm not bad with money i don't right. gamble but, it but i don't know what i'm doing and 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 you can learn. And I'm not a millennial, <laughs> right? But, but it, even hearing people talk about it when it's not exactly your problem helps you get focused on what your problem is. And I'm trying. I've been. I've long wanted to extricate myself from my bank, which was part of the reason of the housing collapse. Right. And it's it's such a fucking pain in the ass. And I just have always posted. It's a lot it. of work, and that's and what they, they believe, that's what they, they try count to on. talk you out. Yeah, it, that's you, what they count you, on. Yeah, you set up all your payees, and then you know they're like, yeah, we got you. Yeah. So uh, I've been really trying to like clean that up and cl- just even close credit cards that yeah. I don't use and I don't want open and I don't want confusing me. And uh, yeah, simplify. Yes, mm-hmm. just um, simplify and figure out. Yeah, it was uh, Marie was saying that she was listening to some. There's a Canadian financial advisor TV show, I guess. Mm-hmm. And Maria loves a financial advisor TV show. Um, and I guess this woman in Canada is not owned by by Big Credit Card, which I guess Susie Orman is owned by Big Credit Card. Susie Orman is a ball. Uh, Gabby Dunn had a little interview with her, and yeah. she's like, she's got her own island. It's like, I, I, like, I respect. <laughs> she has an island? She's Yeah, I respect whatever she did. Like, she, you know, she, you know, people like her and Martha Stewart were the first women in whatever they were doing. Oprah, right. that kind of thing. Who knows how they got – I don't know what kind of choices they had to make and how painful and awful it was. So whatever they have that's grossly wealthy, I, yeah, they, I just I think believe you they earned it. it. You yeah. were the, like the first ones in your in your categories, you know? Right. Um, so she's one of those people. Right, but Maria has been working on and off for like uh, probably five years on this What's Susie that person's Orman name? Um, oh, no, not the joke. But what's, uh, the, what's the Canadian lady? I don't name? know. Um, that's all the information I've got in okay. my brain box off. Right. And is is a Canadian, but if you, I bet you if you, you I'll Google text her. it, yeah, or you could just text her and yeah. ask her. And um, what have I been listening to? I've been listening to a way to uh, figure out how to sort of restart my thinking more in mm-hmm. the, each day. Sort of, I want to start meditating when I wake up, yeah, and uh, just to sort of restart the day and to sort of turn like my thinking over, yeah. you know. If I can do it, um, uh, and I've done it, and then a couple of days I haven't done it, and those days were harder, it turns out. So if I spend five or ten minutes just sort of I know, being quiet and, and sort of planning out my day and mm-hmm. planning out not trying to control everything, I can be of more use. And then it's better than grabbing my phone and checking and getting into a Facebook fight right uh, as, as, the, as the sun yeah, beeps over the... Give it five the, minutes before you fight. Yeah, why not? Why not? I have to wake up earlier than my kid who immediately turns on Japanese anime. (laughs) Which one? Uh, Naruto. Oh, really? Yeah. He loves Naruto. Yeah. Well, you know, uh, I have known... Oh, my God. Your eyes lit up. No, no. Well, I've I've known Miley Flanagan for 30 years. Who's Miley Flanagan? She is Naruto. Oh! Yeah. She is... uh, 
Yeah. So if he ever would like to meet uh, Naruto. Oh, I'm sure she would. She has plenty of time. Uh, she does. <laughs> She's great. She's adorable. Wow. And wonderful. She's the voice or the writer? The voice. Wow. Amazing. 600 episodes, not Union. Ooh. Mm-hmm. Hundreds and hundreds of episodes. But Can she it- does cons. They fly her to Australia. They fly her to Russia. Animation is fucked. They get fucked over. Yeah, yeah, I, it's for not sure. fair. They're, I mean, the writers and mm-hmm. creators and stuff like that. And so she's not uh, the V. I don't know anything about VO work. It, that's not covered by SAG. That's SAG stuff, right? Uh, no, it is not. I think The Simpsons might be, but that's it, right? Because it's on network TV. I don't think they're even part of it. I think they just have separate contracts. I think they just got a. Yeah, you're. I think you're right. Kyle said that they got a separate contract. Wow, and it's true. Somebody well, else. Came I mean, up to when me. if you do VO on Conan on a sketch or something, it's 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 a SAG payment. It goes through SAG. So I think yeah, it uh, animation contracts are different than just regular voiceover, oh, to my knowledge. Wow. And uh, I think it might be put under hosting or other I know acting I, gigs. I or have something friends like that. that have written for uh, some animation, and it, they they don't have guild protection. A really, somebody Sucks. I did flappers that weekend. What weekend? And this a uh, couple of weekends. You know, oh, remember yeah, yeah, a month yeah. ago I headlined. And um, a very nice woman sent me uh, three shows. She was like, we're interested, you know, would you want to write on a a cartoon show? And I'm like, nope. (laughs) Please don't make me. (laughs) And uh, I I don't want to, you know what I want to do right now? I want to write, I want to do long sets and come up with my new album. I need to tighten my new uh, for the I new album. I like stand up comedy. I like stand up comedy, <laughs> and I would like to do a lot of long sets. Yeah, make a good living at it, and then also uh, tighten up the. Um, and some of the jokes are coming right along. Very pleased with um, with some of the stuff, though. As per usual, like Friday for a show. Marie and I just looked at each other at the end of the show going, well, that's a wash. You can't really, yeah, you can't tell if those jokes worked or if they were just going to carry you off stage anyway. Oh, Uh, they were too good. Yeah, yeah, they were too good. There's no way to tell. Yeah. You're like, I'm glad I recorded them. Yeah. Because those, those are shows that you can riff off of, riff on, during because the audience is so supportive that right. it actually will help you that, expand. And, and a you bit. could, yeah, you could find the right phrasing if mm-hmm. you, if you're loose enough. And yeah. of course. So I've I've got a couple of good I've got a couple of good tapes for suggestions for late night sets. Yeah, possibles and um, and that's good. But uh, yeah, I just want to do long sets. Quite honestly, yeah, I I wanted to take the pressure off of trying to put together another late night set. I mean, mm-hmm. I could p- throw one together right now if someone said, "Oh right." It was like, but hey, I, I we got wanna... five minutes. Can you do five minutes? You'd be like, yeah. Yeah. I have a spot <laughs> open on this show, uh, this date. Can mm-hmm. you give me it? Yeah. It, meet me halfway. Otherwise, I have to, uh, the quest It's pretty great. A lot, a lot of the late night shows are booking a bunch of comics right now. Yeah. And it's pretty great. Yeah. It's cool. Yeah. It's, uh, uh, I invited this very nice guy. He's always been really good to me at the Star Tribune in Minneapolis. He's mm-hmm. always written very nice reviews of my stand up. He was like, hey, do you have like a comedy brunch thing on Tuesdays? And I was like, often. Not always. Oh, that article. He came to the brunch. He was visiting in L.A., yeah. right? Okay. Yeah. And he had had dinner with Pete Lee, who's a comic from Minneapolis. And so he's doing a originally... story on Minneapolis comics. Yeah. That moved to L.A. Yes. Okay. Mostly Pete Lee. Okay. <laughs> so he came to lunch and it was, uh, and Alice Waterland was there and, mm-hmm. and um and so we're just talking about stand up. I was I was disappointed that like Andy Erickson and Tommy Ryman weren't there. They might have been, but he didn't mention them, but I think that he would have mentioned them. Mm-hmm. Um But he called me the godmother of comedy. No, somebody told him that. We need to find out who said you were the godmother of Minneapolis comics. And kill them. And kill them. Right. Yeah. No, you're not a fucking godmother. You're a fucking comic. <laughs> and you would crawl over their dead bodies to get their spots, okay? <laughs> more of that kiss my ring kind of yeah. thing it's real nice yeah. it's, uh, you know, if I wore a cape no one would <laughs> if I wore a cape like oh I would like a cape. oh a murderer cape I can't believe you don't have a cape now that I think of it yeah, me neither now that we brought it up I why mean, don't I have a cape you have viking gear I have a very and nice a sword I do have a sting I own a sting is that a sword? Yes. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Do you know that I tell you that I played guest on Mansplane on Nerd Poker, Brian Posehn's podcast? Oh, yeah. It was uh, D&D, and my, ca- my character's name is Guest on Mansplane. Okay. And, uh, and oh, yeah. 
Yeah, and his his whole I his remember whole tuning shtick. this out before. Right, his whole shtick is that he re-explains the other people. Yeah, I've told you this. <laughs> anyway, so uh, I want to write the poem about uh, about Gaston Mansplain. Nobody takes credit like he does. <laughs> anyway, so um, where are we, at? Kyle? Please, that's not bad. Yes. Oh. Hi, I'm Biz. And I'm Teresa. And we host One Bad Mother, a comedy podcast about parenting. Whether you are a parent or just know kids exist in the world, join us each week as we honestly share what it's like to be a parent. Yeah, I mean, I I guess it all starts with I'm awakened by children and I've <laughs> never... I, there are children in my house. They're waking me up. And, like, the coffee doesn't even work anymore. Oh, I know. I've been drinking so much coffee for so many years straight now. It doesn't do anything. Like, I, it just only d- makes sure I don't get a headache, probably. <laughs> it's more medicinal yeah. now yeah. than, like, Like, yeah, I have I'll... to just drink it so that I don't probably get a headache. <laughs> So join us each week as we judge less, laugh more, and remind you that you are doing a great job. Find us on MaximumFun.org, on Apple Podcasts, or wherever you get your podcasts. And we're back. No break for us. Somebody came up to me at the merch table and said, you know, I see the, I see the numbers. It says 101.53, and I know that that's Max Fun. That's not you guys. That that because it's more than an hour, it's longer. The show's longer. Oh, it's oh, always oh, two see. minutes longer oh, yeah, than, yeah, yeah. than normal. And I was like, I am so sorry that you're being lied to. And they wanted to know if we were going to go to Max FunCon. Max FunCon is a weekend of. Um, I, I think I've been to it before. I went once with Maria. I went when my dad was had cancer. Oh, weird. Wait, right after he died. Actually, it was like a couple months after he died. Why would you have gone? Um, I did some weekend and Jesse and there was lots of classes and Maria was there and there was like a campfire. Yeah. Yeah. That's yeah, it. I've done it. It was fun. I did a couple shows. I saw Elvis Mitchell was there. He did a, a Q and a, I met Maeve. Um, okay. Maeve Higgins, right? Maeve, uh, uh, Maeve sounds familiar. Yes. Um, okay. who lives in, she's from Ireland, but she lives in New York now. Yeah. Yeah. Oh yeah. Yeah. She does butter. Um, butter boy yeah butter boy oh i'm gonna do butter boy are you gonna do butter boy this yes. weekend or oh, this monday when this drops this is dropping monday i will have been in new york but i'm doing butter boy tonight in brooklyn yeah. so come on down man oh that's awesome yeah butter boy is fun yeah mm-hmm. yeah and um i got spots galore too oh do you oh your your fucking lover that hates me complained that I complain too much about not having work and then having spots in New York. Hey, motherfucker. <laughs> like, the spots don't pay so much that it's like, I'm, I, I mean, weekend spots are you are reviewing great. an iTunes review right now? Is that what's happening? <laughs> but they're, but they're, they're people's conception oh, yeah. of what work is. It's oh, like yeah. paid work versus spots where you spend half of, half of the money in cab fare. Yeah. yeah. And the rest of it, it's not, I had to, to fly out there. Yep. I mean, I I never break even on my New York weekends. I usually lose about one hundred and fifty to two hundred dollars when right. you take in getting getting places, getting, around, getting from and, the uh, yeah. from the airport to to yeah, the yeah. apartment, and then going getting around. So I lose money. No, the people don't really God. understand the mechanics no. of stand up comedy. Somebody was talking about how um, if you ever do, they said to Maria, this the very nice woman i'm sure so goes if you ever uh, do another tour please consider doing this and i thought another tour what do you think stand up comedy is an, a non stop an tour it's a life that yeah, you, I mean, your life is a it, tour it'd be like saying if you ever think about going to work again you should totally go yes, to work exactly and uh i was like yeah i was thinking about working <laughs> but they but there's no way to know that stand up, like I do stand up comedy for a living. There's no not touring. Yeah, it's you either working or you're not working that right. week. But you know what? Millennial comics mm-hmm. have uh, started using the word tour, and they make it seem special. All right. So the you know the civilians I think are like does that though. Kirkman, uh, 
Mar- Marcella does it, mm-hmm. where you make it, it. It's not like to me. It's like, oh, that's your June. <laughs> right, right. You're <laughs> you're on like, a oh, run I'm on tour. No, that's your June, and then right. you have other things in July. But, <laughs> but people, I mean, maybe it's thematically it's like, it's bands. like new material or something. Yeah. So maybe that you can couch it as a tour with new material. But you know, we're just you could name a run. That's what they're yes. doing. They're naming a run. But it does make an audience member feel like they want to see that particular show because it'll never be the same again even though hey same it's never here, it's it never absolutely is never gonna be the same again guess what you guys if you come and see me uh, in the bay area uh you may see some version of those jokes but hopefully they will be tighter with more punchlines the next time you see them yeah there's always new stuff there's crowd work whatever the gender jokes working really good i'm pretty psyched about it yay and um, um it's got it's potential and maria came up with uh you know that joke I was working on about um, about uh, Indonesian food? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, she was like, had a food truck line about going down and sitting by the ice cages and seeing what kind of food the kids were going <laughs> to... I was like, Jesus fucking Christ, I don't know how to make that funny. <laughs> anyway, and she's like, no, it's... It's just an angle. It's not really funny yet. <laughs> and I was like, you're correct. And uh, so, so much fun. But I, do, I do think that's smart to make it. Like Steve Hofstetter, I'm obsessed with his YouTube channel because he markets himself really, really well. Yes, he does. He'll do Q&A. He'll do with the audience afterwards. He's and, like Kyle Cease, but he does stand up. Yes, yes. Mm-hmm. Uh, and it is, it's in, you know, it's very smart and he, he puts, he'll put his, you know, tour dates up and stuff like that. And yep. I, I'm guess he's it's working. working. I mean, it's a ton of followers yeah. and it's working. He's working. Yeah. Yeah. He works. And, mm-hmm. uh, it's, uh, there's always some weird angle. There's like a third job that we all need to figure out how to do. And I, I can't the, comics that have that, that side of their brain, it's, they're unstoppable. In People a way. think that about me with the merch. Is mm-hmm. uh, what I did was I just embraced the wholesale. Thing, yeah, where I was like, well, at least my merch doesn't suck. Yes, you know, it's right, not right, right. creepy. It isn't just a butt joke. Yeah, it isn't. <laughs> <laughs> Not that a butt joke can't be funny, but I'm just saying, you know, the sure. the first thing I gave away was that um, that's where I keep my vagina T-shirt. Yeah. Uh, um, what what was that? What joke was that off of? It was it's a it's it was from my first album that I redid for most of bread, <laughs> so uh, it's never going to be bread. And the yeah. um, it was the vagina T-shirt joke about how. Somebody wanted me to do a T-shirt that said, that's where I keep my vagina with an arrow going to the left. <laughs> and um, and I didn't want to be the vagina T-shirt. Sure. Player. No. Yeah. So instead, I made a button with both arrows. And then I, because I can't even remember how the whole joke goes anymore. Mm-hmm. But uh, I, 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 I gave away the buttons. And the funny thing is, is 10 years, five Five years earlier, my dad said that I should put a joke or my website or just my name on a painter's cap and give them away at shows. Give them away. Well, like the but and and five years later, I was giving away the buttons. Mm, so right, my right, father, right. as per usual, was correct. Much to my infuriated, um, I was furious. Re- you know, remember? Do you remember Renee Hicks? Yeah, that's how she got so much college work. I think I've told the story before, but she went to NACA. This is the legend. And she had a she had a ton of shit that she gave was it her wait a minute. Yeah, I think it was Renee Hicks. I love Renee Hicks. But she something where she gave away a lot of stuff at NACA. Okay. She was one of the earlier comics to figure out Oh, that college kids like free shit. Right. And um, that made them want to book her. Plus, Swag. she was a great comic. She's a great comic, but that, now they have a, a, a trinket with her name on it. Yes. And they, I'm sure everyone's doing that now. Oh, I'm sure everyone's doing I mean, doing if you it. are a comic that's going to NACA, you should prepare for something like that. Yeah. It's n- it's it's uh, not remotely creatively satisfying, and you're just trying to get as many one-nighters at colleges that pay 15 to Pete Lee did 000. 96 one year. God. He did two runs of 45. Oh, my God. Yeah. I think it was the year after he got divorced. Though that, like, that didn't cause the divorce? No, I think the year before caused it. It was oh, bad. God. It was like he, was, he told me he was on the road so hardcore 
that it just it sort of broke. You know what sucks? And then you you all that money you work so hard on the road for, which is it, that is blood money. Mm-hmm. You got to give half of it to your ex. Well, you know, it's, a, it's a partnership, and when the partnership dissolves, mm-hmm. you got to split it. Oh, you wouldn't know about that, Miss Happily Married. <laughs> We're happily married. Let me go home. <laughs> Can I go home? Yep. MaximumFun.org. Comedy and culture. Artist owned. Audience supported.